Deuteronomy 17 and reading from verse 16. Moreover, he shall not multiply horses for himself, nor shall he cause the people to return to Egypt to multiply horses, since the Lord has said to you, you shall never again return that way. He shall not multiply wives for himself, or else his heart will turn away, nor shall he greatly increase silver and gold for himself. Now it shall come about, when he sits on the throne of his kingdom, he shall write for himself a copy of this law on a scroll in the presence of the Levitical priests. It shall be with him, and he shall read it all the days of his life, that he may learn to fear the Lord his God, by carefully observing all the words of this law and these statutes, that his heart may not be lifted up above his countrymen, and that he may not turn aside from the commandment to the right or the left, so that he and his sons may continue long in his kingdom in the midst of Israel. Um, Moses, uh, again, I think I said the other day that uh, he's um, reiterating uh, really uh, the instructions of God that, that God has been giving to Israel through Moses ever since they came out of Egypt, out of slavery. And now just before they're going into the present, the promised land, M Moses is reiterating those, reminding them of these things. And at the end of uh, Deuteronomy, you're going to read that uh, all the people say, Amen. They say, yes, we understand and we will do all that God commands us. And uh, here, um, Moses is saying, when you get into the land and you ask for a king and God gives you a king, which he will do, that's going to happen, then this is how your king should behave. He shouldn't multiply horses for himself or cause his people to return to Egypt. Um, he, he shouldn't multiply wealth for himself, actually, or make his people go back for safety or for protection or for any other reason to the land of Egypt where they uh, came out because God says you'll never return again that way. Uh, he won't multiply, he shouldn't multiply wives for himself or his heart will turn away or, or greatly increase silver and gold. And uh, so we can pretty well understand that, that this king has to do certain things. And, um, uh, and but it will go, he, he will go on here, Moses, to kind of go deeper into this and talk about that when the king comes into his kingdom and sits on the throne, he should write for himself a copy of this law on a scroll. The first five books of the Bible, the king should write for himself on a scroll and then he should read it, read it. Um, uh, it shall be with him and he shall read it all the days of his life. I, um, I think that's actually a wonderful thing to be talking about here because we're going through the Bible in a year at least I hope that's what you're doing with me uh, I use uh, something called the one year Bible online.com and I go through the Bible uh, every year I've been doing that for quite a few years 10 12 15 years maybe uh, I was I was recommend it was recommended to me to do that and I took it up and didn't quite finish it every year but but for the last 10 or 12 years I have gone through the Bible every year. Uh, I have to say that I haven't read it every day, although I am becoming better with that. Sometimes I would, there would be a few days go by and I hadn't, and I would have to catch up. And sometimes I would read ahead because I knew that I wouldn't be able to read over the next couple of days. But nonetheless, I have filled my mind with the word of God for the last, I don't know how many years. I've been a Christian for 23 years. And uh, for many of those years, I've read through the Bible in a year. And really, that's what God is telling the king who will sit on the throne of Israel. Write this word out for him, the first five books of the Bible, and read it every day of your life. And that is the way, God says, that you will learn to fear me, that you will learn to live in right relationship with me by carefully observing all the words of the law and these statutes. You see, what God is saying to the king who is to come is, I want you to write it all out, because when you write out something, you'll remember it a lot better. And then I want you to read it, because when you read it every day, that's going to be retained by you. But I want to make sure you understand that writing it out and reading it is not enough. You have to do what you hear me tell you to do. You have to do it. And in that way, your heart will not be lifted up above 
your countrymen. One of the great perils of our day, well actually probably of any day, of the human, of, of just throughout the human race is that we want to magnify ourselves. Human nature is that I want to be lifted up, I want to be seen to be better, I want to have a higher place, I want to have a better reputation, I want to be exalted amongst uh, the rest of the people and more especially so for a king or someone who is placed in a position of authority. How many times do we see that? That uh, when someone comes to a place of authority, they begin to uh, become very arrogant and proud and almost exalt themselves. We have a saying uh, which has born, uh, been borne out many times in just in my lifetime, and that is absolute power corrupts absolutely. And uh, God here is making sure that the uh, kings that will come uh, understand that they are to to write this word down, they are to read it every day, and they are to do what it says, so that, two things, they learn to fear the Lord their God, to fear, hold in reverence and awe, and understand they are not God, that he is God and they are not, and also that they do not begin to exalt themselves, lift themselves up above their countrymen. What is it about a king that he has that he wasn't given? This is what God is saying. He's been saying that. I think last time we talked about uh, Deuteronomy 6, watch yourself that you do not forget the Lord who gave you all these things, who brought you into this land. And here it's the same thing. Read his word, uh, write his word, read his word, do his word, so that you keep yourself in right relation to God and, you, uh, and in right relation to other people. Nothing you have wasn't given to you. There's nothing that you have received that or that you have that you did not receive that truth is repeated in the new testament everything you have you received why would you start to make yourself uh, bigger than the people around you to promote yourself to start to think that you are better uh, in, in all sorts of ways than the people around you um, uh, god is saying everything you have i gave you i gave you and until you understand yourself in right relationship with me, you will not be able to be in right relationship with other people. What's the safeguard for it? Write this word on a scroll. Read this word every day and do the things that you read in it. That his heart may be not lifted up above his countrymen and that he may not turn aside from the commandment to the right or the left, and what will be the result of all of this? So that he and his sons may continue long in his kingdom in the midst of Israel. That a king who decides to keep God in his right place, who will not allow his heart to become proud or lifted up above his countrymen, who will choose to every day of his life read the word of God and obey the word of God, that king can be assured that his sons will inherit his kingdom and will continue on. And I just want to grab that last bit uh, just for a, a little bit and see um, how can we apply that into our uh, spiritual life. We belong to a spiritual kingdom. You and I are actually kings and queens in a spiritual kingdom because we reign with Christ. We will reign with him when he comes back and we are a part of his body. So uh, we are in a sense uh, daughters, if you like, of the king, uh, sons of the king. But uh, I'm not talking about that in any way that I know is talked about. <laughs> I read that and see things online that just, oh, it just makes me cringe, actually, because we do not have any authority uh, of our own. We have only the Holy Spirit within us, the Spirit of Christ, his authority as he speaks through us and lives through us. But one thing he says here, that his heart may not be lifted up above his countrymen, that he may not turn aside from the left or the right, that he and his sons may continue long in his kingdom in the midst of Israel. That we have uh, spiritual sons and daughters born by the Spirit of God into the kingdom of God. When I say sons and daughters, I mean people that we have preached the gospel to who have come to faith 
through the preaching of the word, of course, by the spirit of God, through the word of God, not anything to do with us. But Paul will say that he has many sons and daughters. He is a father to the church in Corinth, for example, because he is the one who preached the word to them through which they were born again. In that sense, I mean it, that we will have sons and daughters who will continue long in the kingdom if we fill our minds with this truth of God, if we determine to read it every day of our lives, to observe the commandments, to hold God in his right place and not lift ourselves up above our countrymen, we can be sure that we will have this ongoing, uh, growing family, um, which God will bring forth through us and our testimony as we live for him. It was a bit convoluted and I hope you understand what I mean because in no way am I saying that we are God or that we even have uh, any authority on our own. People are born again through the living and enduring word of God as the Holy Spirit makes that real to them. But you and I, as believers in the Lord Jesus, we are privileged to be the ones to come alongside those people, to preach the word, to live and talk the gospel in front of them so that they come to Christ through our ministry. And that's what I'm saying. We will have sons and daughters in this kingdom and we they will live long and we will build the church or we will go along with the work of Christ as he builds his church through us, as he builds his church through us. And... Um, and his kingdom grows and grows and grows on the earth. Um, I hope that uh, that made sense. Sometimes I do these videos, I get a bit carried away, and I'm not sure that they do, but I trust that it will. And that wherever there's been any confusion, God will um, come in by his spirit and make things clear to you. And I thank you for listening. I thank you. And I pray that you will do, as Moses told all of those kings to do, and, and as God tells each one of us to do, man does not live by bread alone, but from every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God. Make it your business to read his word and to do what it says. See you soon.